Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lili Nishma Simi Moros Yusuf Mordechai. What? Ah! Hi, Rebelli. I write these lines while I was going through a particular challenging Kufa. I'm submitting this letter to provide encouragement and steadfastness for those who are longtime Lomde Adaf, newbies, those struggling, and of course yourself and in person sheer participants. I'm now coming up to finishing the 13th Mesechta. Thanks to MDY and yourself. I don't, I don't think I ever finished the Mesechta until some two years ago, and I'm not 20 years old. I learned with my Chavrusa, Ralph, Groskop. We learned slowly and covered a lot, yet it was my enjoying a chat rather than devoting our learning time to learning that kept me behind. I got engaged at 37 a few months after starting the Daf, which was amazing. Through thick and thin, on buses, the underground, trains, flights, in train stations and airports have taken out the daf and learned sometimes for hours. I cannot thank you enough. That has enormously changed my life and I'll never ever give up. Yes, the current situation I'm in seems dark, bleak and bitter and I believe Hashem has a plan and reason. Yes, the daf with MDY continues. Bezer Hashem Yisbarach, Yashar Koyach, Zev Gruber, Gold is Green, London, England, Yashar Koyach Gadol for the Chashav email. Yisrael Travis, hey Ligir Rebbe, just like that, oh, I'm already, I'm already feeling good. In a nutshell, what is the greatness of Yashir besides the tremendous Ahavas Yisrael and Achdos? When I put my finger on a Gemara and there's a four-way Machloikis, by the time you're finished explaining it, I'm in Yehupetz. But when you make your excellent graphic charts, the four-way Machloikis is boilet. And I internalize the Machloikis in an amazing way. I taught for 25 years. Rebellious Shir is the only Shir in the world. Mamish has amazing diamond tool. Keep going, keep going strong. MDY, Israel Travis, Toronto, Lakewood. There's a guy in the Shoimrim car doing the daf. And MDY Toronto is inviting the Tzibur to a tremendous seum on Mesechtas Nedarim. I think we're all doing themselves dar. If you go to mdycn.com, there are eight cities that are listed there so far. Whoa, whoa, whoa watch that. <laughs> because it's a milk and honey restaurant. <laughs> Authentic. By the way, this is all Nachman Seltzer's fault. This is for his new song. We'd have loved to join you in sunny Miami and get away from the bitter Canadian cold. But unfortunately, we were snowed in and they won't let us out. Cesario Blau, Mayor Planco, MDY Toronto Reps. So we invite all our fellow Canadians to join the great CMA we're planning here in Toronto. Rabbi says, anyways, well, as I was saying, when a person makes a net there. No? <laughs> it's not going to fly in the Durham. Let's do more emails. <clears throat> Let's see if this will fly. This is Mo Landy's son who's coming with him to Miami and apparently he's super excited. Raboisai, here's this excitement. The volume is on just so you can't hear him. <laughs> okay. To the MDY techs, whoever you are, have I wronged you or something? Why are you deleting so many of my comments? And if I did have some Musser tech advice once in a while, does that give you the right to delete my comments? <laughs> oh, listen to this. Why am I saying this? I just posted a comment on the Dorim 83 with a link to a previous year in Shabbos to show the friendship between Reb Eli and Reb Nachman. Reb Eli, take out your phones, because this could be a funny thing if it lands somewhere that's not supposed to be landing. Or it hits the Magichir straight in the face in middle chair. First time ever. People's coffee is flying in different places. I don't know, I, don't, I shouldn't I don't be saying like this. Like Hold on, oh, it says, should be natural? Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm gonna do mamish in middle chair. This is what I do in middle chair, Reb <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, okay, okay, fine, fine. Well, let me just, I think this is really funny. Oh, yeah, hi. Okay, fine. Another question. It doesn't hear, right? So you can just pretend you're learning now. He wants to know if the emails to Rebbe Eli are censored by who? If I would advise rebellion, some technical issues, we don't agree or grasp you while you hide from it. Also, not technical, Torah, the kids are. The point is that Yosef explained to me that the shir goes on YouTube live and about, I don't know, three, four, five hundred people sometimes watch it. And when he edits it and he puts it back on YouTube, everything gets lost. So if you are posting comments during the live session, it's going to get erased. So if you want to have your comments there and the good comments, then make sure that you post them afterwards. Basically what he's trying to say is that when you look at YouTube, when you look at YouTube and there's uh, three and a half thousand. Okay, now we can start to share. There's at least 500 or so comments or views that get lost afterwards. <laughs> there are people like Peretz Chaim Levine who brought literally 600 people plus to the Shir. There are people like Dr. Factor who actually, because of him, 600 people left the Shir. <laughs> Keep on going. You're doing great. You're doing amazing work. David Mackinton, can you give more chizik during shir so people shouldn't fall? I'm crying right now. I finished Yvamis and then the daf adds up and now I'm up to daf samach tes. Please give more chizuk. Thank you so much for making this beautiful PS started from Yvamis and against everyone's expectations. I finished Ksubis and now I miss finishing the dar without I, whatever. I think the issue is, if you ask me, I don't know exactly, but he's holding daf samach tes. Why is he holding daf samach tes? Should be holding with us and Daf Pei Dalid. Whatever you missed, forget about it. You'll get make it up one day. Right now, you should not be holding anywhere but on Daf Pei Dalid. The Koilel is sponsored by Anonymous, and the Koilel is sponsored by supporting Torah Strength and Arabic Tochen. And the spa, the sponsor of the Masechta is in Zgulakat Torah of Einter Michael Yaakov Yalak. The Parnasach Chodesh, the Nishma Zechariah and Moshe, and two sponsors today in honor of the wedding of the son of Reb Moshe Pluchak to Mr. You're not going to believe this. Let me just say who Reb Moshe Pluchak is to me. When I was a child, I was about 15, 16 years old. We lived in Kensington, and Reb Moshe Pluchak used to learn with my father, Bechavrusa. And he learned with me, Chavrusa. He used to learn with him every single day in the mirror. And I spent many, many Shabbosim in his house when he first got married. He took me in, it was a hose. He gave me a lot, a lot of chizik back in the day. So let me read this again. In honor of the wedding of the son of Ramosha Pluchak, the son of Ramosha Pluchak, to Mr. Rocky Stefanski's daughter. Keeping it in the Mishpacha. Mazel Tov Ramosha. Tzvi Schwartz, Lili Nishmas, my grandmother, Esther Frumit, Bas Ramosha. The art is sponsored for the month, the next month, and the month after. Three months for complete refua for Chaim Tzvi, Ben Leia. Ravoisai, get your tickets to come to the, the Galiseum in Miami. Promises to be something unforgettable. Zok the Hale Gimar. Now, we're in the middle of a Sugit of Pegimel and Beis. And we learned in the Mishnah that if a woman says, Koinim, Sha'ani, Nehena, Labriois, I'm not going to have any Hana from human beings. So how does Shaila, is the husband a human being or not? Yeah. Like I said this a number of times, over here, past even more, a woman told her friend, you know, my husband is Mamish a Malach. So she said, look, I don't know if my husband is not a Malach or is a Malach, but one thing I can tell you, he's not a mensch. <laughs> here you have Koinim, that I'm having a not from any Bria, and here's the cartoon, the guy says that he's not Bechal Briois, so the husband says, what am I, a goat? Meh, manig ez, fine. He's not a Bria, he's not, not a Bria, is a Bria, fine. That's the Shiloh. We had a Machlag, it's three Machlagis. So we're holding by Rav Nachman, which we said yesterday, and I thought it was very interesting. Because when I thought about it initially, 
I think I made a mistake and I might be wrong in this also, but explain to me what's pshat. What is better, to chazer something 20 times in a row or to chazer something, learn it once and then learn it a week later and then another week later and every week do it over and over every week. What's better, Rabbi Yisai? What's better for the memory? The second one. That's what everybody says. So, Okay, if you have time, you can just do Chazar all day long. Yeah, every, yeah. And then after that, I agree with you. I, I Exactly, I agree with you. And I'll tell you why. Because I thought about something. <laughs> I agree with Nachman many times. The ones that we don't agree, then it's fire. I noticed by myself, I don't know if it's with other people. Alanisim of Hanukkah, I know by heart. It's only once a year. But you say it over and over in that one week period. Shir Shal Yoyim of Wednesday and Monday. I've said it probably over 2,000 times in my life. You say 52 times a year, times 40 years, whatever, do the math. I don't know it by heart. I don't even know how to start it. So, okay, very good. And, how, and what about and what about Monday? Monday, I don't remember. Hey, Shkai, welcome to the club. No? But Alanisa of Hanukkah, you know. Alanisa of Purim, though, that... But right? you do know, you probably know better than Monday's Shishiyah. So anyway, the reason why I'm saying this is because we're going to do Chazar here. We've done Chazar many times in, in, in the Dharim because it's such... Monday? I don't know. And even if it is, you think I know how to get past the third boss? Okay. okay. Yeah. Alanis, <coughs> so I don't say out loud today. My, my point is that memory is interesting. Now, if you say it many times in a row and then repeat it every week, that is the every best. Woohoo! So impressive, impressive after one and a half thousand times because you're only 40. Yeah. Okay. Omar Reb Nachman. Reb Nachman Omar. What's going on here? Now we can start the daf. Loilam bal lav bchalal brioisu. So Reb Nachman goes back to the first shot of the Gemara that a husband is not included in the people that she spoke about. And therefore what? She makes a tnai that she's not going to benefit from human beings. It doesn't include her husband. If it doesn't include her husband, then her husband has no right to be made for the nether. Yeah? You hear? Because it doesn't include the husband, so he doesn't have a right to be made for the nether. So then what's the continuation of the Mishnah? So again, the Mishnah started off saying, I can't benefit from anybody in the world. Any offer, you can't be made for. And then it says another line, and we explain that according to the Terutzim, it, they have to do with each other. So according to Rav Nachman, what's Pshad? What does it mean she could benefit from Leket, Shikha, and Peah? Explains the Ran, unbelievable. You have a husband who's not human. He's a, he's a goat. He, he's not in the category of human beings. She made a nether against all brioys, all humans, not including her husband. Obviously, she wants to benefit from her husband. She's married to the guy. But once they get divorced, what happens? It jumps back. He becomes a human being. He becomes one of the people that she hates and doesn't want to benefit from. So how is she going to live? Oh, she's going to eat leket, shikha, and peya. That's what she's going to eat. That's what it says over here. So, however, if they get divorced and she can no longer benefit from this guy that was her husband who wasn't a Bria, why? Because this guy that was her husband today is not her husband and now he turns into a Bria, becomes human. He becomes a regular person and a regular person she can't benefit from. So, how in the world is she going to survive? She could eat the Leket, the Shikha, and the Peah. What is Leket, Rabbi Yisai? Anybody remember? So, two stalks. I'm just saying, because a lot of people say, uh, MDY is babyish, there's, there's pictures, there's this, that, but then you ask adults, and, and, and so, a Talmud Chacham came over to me after the Shir yesterday and he said, it was Givaldic. The first time I really, like, now I'm picturing it better, yeah? Like, we say it all that. Like, you go pay it. Okay, don't be a baby, don't look at the picture, and then you won't know what it is for the rest of your life. <laughs> mask him? Yeah, you're, ma- you're part of the shear. You should go. I want to see the other guy be masked. So, so it goes like this. I just want to explain to you the Saran over here because we have a short daf, and I think it's somewhat important. It says like this in the Saran. He has a beautiful kasher. 
Because at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself a question. What happened? You have a human being who started off the nether. When the nether started, his wife's nether started, his wife was permitted to benefit from him. Six years later, he flips. Something changes in his status. And now it's also for her to benefit from him. Wait a minute. This should be a Gemara somewhere. If a nether, the day of the nether, it was like this. And then later on it happened like that. What happens? So in fact, it is a Gemara. So the Ram brings you Shalmi. Shalmi says that if a person made a nether, I'm not going to benefit anybody that lives on a boat in 30 days. So what happens in 30 days? I thought it's it it fascinating. You know, in yeshiva, we use the word chalois. The chalois this, chalois that. It's in the ran. The word is chalois in the ran. Just my gemara within the kudus did chalus. You know, proper Israeli Hebrew, whatever, I don't know. Chalois, it says in the ran. A number of times on Omad Aleph over here. The question is whether we go by the shas amira at the time that, that the person made the nether. And at that time, the person wasn't on a boat yet. He wasn't on his cruise. Or do we go by the chalois? When day 30 hits, whoever's on a boat then becomes Aser. We pass on Rebbe Kiva that it goes by the Shasamira. Whoever is on a boat when I make the nether, even though the nether is not chal for 30 days, whoever's on a boat today, that's why I meant. And that's what happens. If so, ask the Ran, it goes by the time he spoke. So over here, she spoke and she said, I'm not benefiting from brios, from human beings. Her husband is not included. And it goes by the time that you speak. So the fact that they got divorced six years later, and now her husband turned into a bria, into a regular human being, how could he flip? At the time of the nether, he was mutter. So whatever happens later, you could go on a boat and off a boat. You could get divorced and married six times. It doesn't matter. It goes by the shasamira and not by the chalois. As they fricked around. So then he says, you have to make a tremendous nafkimina and a very simple nafkimina. But our sugi, and it just explains our sugi a little bit better. I, I kind of mentioned it yesterday in passing. That in our sugi, we're talking about what is the lishna de bnei adam. In other words, what is the wife trying to convey here? Why is he not a bria? Why is the husband not a bria? Because we understand what she means. When she says, I don't want to benefit from people, she means all people other than my own husband. She obviously doesn't mean her husband, otherwise she's going to die. Who's going to take care of her? So she doesn't mean her husband. So mainly you make such an afkimina, but by Yardi Hayam, that's a different machloikis. Do we go by the guy's shasamira, or do we go by the chalais? It's not about a specific person, what, she, what the person meant or didn't mean. It's, is it these people or these people? Does it go by the time I say the nether, or the time that the nether is chal? Over here we're talking about, what did she mean? She obviously didn't mean her husband. But she obviously meant that if she gets divorced and she hates him, she's going to be like everybody else in the world. And she's not going to have enough from it. And then he says a beautiful line. I thought I'd put it all the way at the end in purple. It's three lines from where it becomes very, very wide if you want to see it inside. Hayu pirusha the Yerushalmi. This is what the Yerushalmi means. And whoever doesn't explain the Yerushalmi like this, he doesn't know how to learn. Pasha doesn't know how to learn. Don't even try to say something else. And then he goes on to say, but maybe the Yushami meant something else. I have no idea why he does that. Because he says, if you don't understand the Yushami like this, you're a Maharet. And then he says, but maybe the Yushami... Okay, fine. So that's that run. So don't say we don't do runs. and We do them fast. Here it is. Eisvei. Eisvei Rav Lerav Nachem. You're telling me that I've paid down on the top. You're telling me that a husband is not a bria, he's not a person, he's not a human being, he's not included in her nether? If a woman uses an interesting lashon, Netula, I am removed from Jews. What could it possibly mean, Rabbi Isa? I'm removed from Jews. Oh, Lachari means relations with Jews. She's not going to have any relations. There's a Dutch there's a way to explain it, and it means I won't share, I want food, it's, it's about food. But Netula, I'm removed, is not such a good lotion when it comes to food. It's more of a relationship. I want to have relations. If a woman says such a thing and she's married, 
he just gets rid of his peace, and then Mela, they can have relations. But she's usher to all the people in the world. This is what we call Dvarim Shebena Levena. If it's Dvarim Shebena Levena, he could remove what's Negea to him, what hurts him, his, it's his relation with her, that he removes, everybody else remains. The is Bal La Bechlal Briyosu. Try to understand this line without a chart. The is Bal La Bechlal Briyosu. And if you're telling me that a husband is not part of the human beings, he's his own little category, he's a goat. Nidre Inu Nefesh Hain, the Yafer La La Ilam. So it's an Inu Nefesh. Then now we, we went into a category of something that's really painful. And he should be able to be made for, for everybody. What in the world is going on? Why is it in a nefesh? What's going on here? The Ran says something, you're not going to believe it. Mom is not going to believe it. Check this out. It's a three-step process, says the Ran. Without the Ran, we would never understand this. Impossible. He says like this. If the husband is a Bria, he's part of all human beings, so it's beautiful. Then what did she say? She said, She looks at him and she says, I am removed from all Jews. In other words, I'm anyways usher to the entire world. I'm Aisha Sish. I'm going to add one more step. I'm going to add you to the list. So she accomplished something. Again, if the husband is a human being and she's including him in her nether, it's very good. She accomplished that now, now something that was mutter became aser. Her husband that was mutter is aser. That's dvarim shebeinu levena. I didn't have enough room on that blue line, so I put in tiny, tiny words. Dvarim shebeinu levena. He's mefer. What, what do you mean you're asering me? You can't aser me. It's between us. Between us, he gets rid of it. And what happens? Everybody in the, else in the world remains aser. But if you're telling me, this is the Gemara's cash. But if you're telling me that the husband... I'm proving to you, Rav Nachman, that you're wrong. Because if you're telling me according to you that the husband is, is, is not a Bria, he, she's not including him in her nether. She's not looking at him. So what in the world did she say? She's not stupid. She didn't add anything. She's saying all Jews are Osir. Guess what, woman? You're married. You're Aisha Tzish. You don't have to make a nether. You're Osir anyways. It's not up to you. But, but, but people don't stop talk. Ella Mai, she wanted to add something. You know what she added? Fruit. She said, all the fruit of the whole world is also to me. Not only relationships with all people in the world, all the fruit. We don't like that so much, but that's the only way to be Masbara words. She didn't say fruit. What did she say? Why she why couldn't you say that's fruit? Because it can't mean Tashmish. So, so what? does it mean? So what does it mean? What does it mean? I don't know. God, people don't talk. Said. Garbage trucks. I what don't know, she but she didn't say that. No, there's only two. It doesn't there's say there's that. There's two Hanas. There's that and there's that. Those are the Hanas. Garbage trucks are not one of them. He doesn't want to travel. I don't know. No. How do you know? What, how because this is the, the whole mistake that we're talking about food. I'm asking food. I'm asking you this. I'm asking this. This, this, this human, human necessities. Human, this is what, this, and this is what people talk about. This is what people make Nadarm about. I thought about that. It's like, yeah, it's a little, it's a little far. I want to come, I want to say, no, I'm Natula Mayudim. She doesn't say then. Now. She's now Natula. Yeah, maybe better. Elamai. And here's the Nakuda. So what is fruit? Fruit is inu nefesh. That we said. Fruit, shower, food. Shower, no, shower we said it's not inu nefesh. Right? It could not. Machloikis. Fruit is inu nefesh. So fruit is inu nefesh. Right. Ask the Gemara. Ask the Gemara. Fruit is inu nefesh. I'm forced now into a corner. Because she's not, according to you, Nachman, she's, the husband is not a Bria. Not a Bria means that she was speaking about fruit. Speaking about fruit, it's a different category. Now he can be Mefer for everybody in the whole world. Not just Beinu Levena. It's not Beinu Levena, now it's Inu. Let's do the Cheshman again. If we're talking about, if, like the, two, the, the, the other Territs, that a husband is a Bria, if the husband is a Bria, he's part of the whole world, so very good. When she made a nether against human beings about, about relations with human beings, she, she meant her husband and she meant to answer him. She took something that's mutter and made it us her. Everything makes sense. But if you have Nachman hold that the husband is not included in a Bria, he's not part of the human beings of the world. 
So when she made a nether against all the human beings, she couldn't have meant relations, because that's already usher. So obviously she meant food. <laughs> food is inu nefesh. And inu nefesh, she should be able to be made for, for the whole world, including everybody else, not only the husband. Let's see it inside. It's mamish, like, how did the Iran get to this? The Messiah or something, I don't know. This is, uh, it's like so many steps. V'yamriz ba'la b'chlal b'riyosu nidre inu nefeshem. It doesn't talk about fruit, doesn't say anything. It's all hinted over here. Nidre inu nefeshem, why? Because we must be talking about fruit. V'yafar l'la ilam. And therefore you should be able to make a nether to the whole world, uh, hafar to the whole world. Eimelach. Zingor says no. Of course a husband is not a Bria. He's not in the nether usually. Usually. Why do I want to say that? Because it doesn't make any sense to say that we're talking about fruit. The word Netulam and Ayudim is talking about Tashmish. Let's just go that way. Usually, don't bring me any right from here. You're asking me, oh, the Mishnah is talking about that, 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 that the husband is a Bria, not a Bria. Don't bring me any right from here. Why? It's obvious over here when she's saying Netulam and Ayudim that she's talking about Tashmish, something that's mutter, and now she's making it Aser. Fine. So I just want to show you the upgraded version after discussing with Yoshi and Rabbi Steinar came over to me afterwards. Oh, I forgot to put the video in. Okay, we'll do it tomorrow. Remind me. Uh, that was a good one. That one would have had enough. Okay, I have to remember. But Yoshi, come tomorrow, okay? Be there in time. This is, we're talking about Leket Chikopeya. Here's the upgraded version. Here's the guy moving away, and there's Leket. Two, two stalks fell, <coughs> and to remember it, they fell, so they, they're, they're injured. They, they fall off his thing. This is Shikha, and if you notice, because Rabbi Starna told me this, so the fence is removed, and somebody else actually sent me an email about this. Shikha, there's no fence. Shikha is to forget a bundle. What do you say? Fence helps you remember. Fence helps you remember. And over here, he's forgetful. He forgot where he put his glasses. Uh, yesterday, twice, I, I, was, I was holding my phone and I, I asked my wife where I put my phone. My sister, I'm serious. Is those kind of feel that has, a, that has a gate? That's what he's saying. It's, it's, a, it's a mission in Peya. If you leave the bundle next to a wall, next to a wall. But if you leave the bundle in the middle of the field, then it could be shikha? Yeah, because what he's saying okay, is, no. What he's trying to say is that if you, you put something to remember, you put it by a tree, put it by a fence, I don't know a tree, but you put it by a fence, it's a sim, it's, I'm going to come back to that thing. You put it in the middle of your giant 600 acre field, you're not going to remember, so it's a shikha. Peya is not something that you forgot, but something that you have to do. You have to leave over the peya, and here, just to remember the payas. Okay, fine. Leket is the two that fall, shikha is that you forget a bundle, and peya. As we said yesterday, that there's an Indian of Tazov. You leave it, and when you leave something, you're not giving it to anybody. So in Mela, even though she, this woman, what happened? She made a nether, she's not going to benefit from anybody in the world. And then she, she, she's stuck, she has nothing to eat. So she could take Leket Chikopea, which is for the Ani. I, the guy that owns this field, he's included in her nether. He's not allowed to benefit her. So how in the world? Could he give her tzedakah? The answer is he's not giving her tzedakah. He's leaving tzedakah. He's leaving things for anybody to take. When you leave something out in an open field and someone comes and takes it, it's not a direct benefit. If he handed it to her, that would be problematic. But it's tazo. If you leave it in the field, so Mela, she's allowed to benefit. Says so the Gemara, um, maybe, Stam, I know it's a little, it's a push, but to that guy, that it's only the Samach test. Over here, the Torah teaches us when you drop something, don't go back and pick it up. You just keep on going. Keep on moving with the daf. Keep on going. You'll pick it up later, yeah. But not now. Now you have to hold enough pay dollar. Says the Gemara of Elektani Bemaiserani. Elektani Bemaiserani. Okay, so for this, what? We're going into, it's Kedai for you, Bar Mitzvah Bachar, to listen to this. <coughs> Now we're going into the famous chart and we're mamish going to go into the famous chart. Yesterday, Tomer's watch, his screensaver was this chart on his watch. The whole watch was this. So he remembers it. He's just messing around with it. When a person has a pile of fruit, he has a hundred apples or grapes, 
He gives 2%, you give truma to the kayin. Approximately 2%, it could be 1%, it could be one grain, but we give approximately 2%. Maiser Rishon, you have to give 10%. Now we're going to go into it a little bit more than we usually go into it. Usually we, we discuss Truma and we finish. We Maiser, Maiser Shai. Today we're going to discuss everything. Maiser Rishon is 10% that goes to the Levi. Once the Levi gets 10% of all the apples, there's only 98 ap- apples left. He gives 9.8 apples to the Levi. Now the Levi must give a little bit to the Kayan. He gives 10% to the Kayan. If you don't give, if you don't give, uh, Trumas Meiser, it's Tevel. Tevel is fruit that it's also awesome midday rice to eat. You get Misa for it. Now, Meiser Shani and Meiser Oni, you have to give 10%. But it depends what year of the Shemitah year it is. In 1, 2, 4, 5, you give Meiser Shani to yourself. You give 10% to yourself, but there's stipulations. You can only eat that 10% in Yerushalayim. And if you can't bring it all up to your shalayim, so then you, you, you transfer into money, you bring the money to your shalayim, you go to restaurants, you drink wine, you do whatever you want, but it's for yourself. But in years three and six, that's what we're talking about right now, you have to take 10% and give it to the poor. My Sarani. What about today, Rabbi Isai? Very big problem. Sometimes they take it and the mechalit. My Sarani is not such a big deal. It doesn't make your fruit tevel. But not giving my Sarani is more problematic. Now, this is Meiser Ani. It's a potato head Ani. If you have a whole pile of fruit, you have to give some of those fruit 10%, take out, pile, and give it to the Ani. Okay? If a person is an Amaret, Mom is going back to the basics. I did change it. What did I change? That's right, I did. How do you? Yeah, not bad. Okay, he's not such an Amar. <laughs> no, because I was just reading the Chazanish today. What's an Amar? It's gathered today in Trumas and Maish for somebody that doesn't put on tefillin and Chal Shabbos. Not putting on tefillin is Amar. Not this, the whole thing. If he has a. Fine. Doesn't have a beard. Amar. Amaritz. We call him Amaritz. If he's Amar. So they made Xero. We learned that it's not a day right. So the Rabbana made Xero at a certain point that anytime you buy fruit, from an Amaretz, you go into one of these stores, Makal, that's owned by an Amaretz, we know what he looks like. You have to take Trumas and Maestras, even though he tells you he took Trumas and Maestras. Now, I just did a quick chart here, so we get a, a little bit of over. Very, very simple. Everybody said, don't, don't go to sleep on me here. Demai. Demai means fruit, we don't know what it is. Do Mai. Domai, what fruit is this? Meaning, it's the fruit of an Amaretz. You bought it from an Amaretz, you don't know whether you took... Now, Truma, I said Truma, somebody said Truma, we, the Gemara always says, they take. Listen, it's not a big deal, it's only 2%, 1%. They don't care, they don't, to give 10% of your things away, that Amaretz doesn't like to do. So he plays games. Now, you have a bunch of fruit. You bought from a store, you bought 100 apples. Let's pretend it's the rice, okay? Just stop because I like apples. Really, you know, grapes. Now you have to give Maiser Rishon. You have to give to the Levi, your shear. The problem is, it's not a problem. The issue is the Levi can't sue you. Why? Because maybe the Amaretz already gave the Maiser Rishon. It's a suffix. What, what, what happens when you have a suffix? I'm always a But... If you don't give the Maiser Risha, and you, at the end of the day, you could eat it. Other people could eat it. You're not over the rices over here. The truma of the Maiser, the, the, the small amount, the 10% that the Levi gives the Kayan, that becomes a Dairaisa. That becomes a Dairaisa. And Mimela, even though it's a suffix, if that remains in your food, you can't eat it. It's Tevel. Maiser Shani. Is the rice also? I might have said something else before. Maizer Shani, if I did, I'm sorry. I apologize. Maizer Shani is the rice that you must eat in your shalayim. So you have to bring to your shalayim. Maizer what happens with the years three and six? That's what we're talking about here. What do you do with it? Do you have to give it to a poor person? Or you can just pretend it doesn't exist. You tell the poor guy, I think the guy in the store, the, the owner of the Makalat in Tel Aviv, you know, he's not keeping anything. I think he gave the Maizer Go fight with him. Could you do that or not? Says the Gemara, 
There are three things that this poor woman who made a nether without thinking very strongly about it and what's going to happen after she gets, who's going to support her? She could go to the fields and pick up some of the like at Shikopeo. How come it doesn't say she could pick up Maiserani? Everybody who buys fruit, everybody who has fruit, has to give Maiserani. Why can't she take Maiserani? Says the Gemara, but like Tony with Maiserani. I, it doesn't say Maiserani in the Bayas, but Hanyi Babraisu with Maiserani. And in the Bryce, it does say she could take from Maiserani. Which one is it? Could she take Maiserani? Was it omitted on purpose or no? Omar Rabbi Yosef Lekashi. Ha, Rabbi Yezer. The Bryce is Rabbi Yezer. Ha, Rabbanon. It's Machlaikis, Rabbi Yezer, Rabbanon. And Echanami. What's going on here? The Snan, Rabbi Yezer, Oimer, Ain't Odom Tzorach Likro Shem, Al Maiser, Oni Shal Dmai. A person doesn't have to announce that he took out Maiserani. Now, I just want to say the round real quickly before I forget. The round says a beautiful thing. You can see it on the base, like towards the, the wide lines over there. And he says like this. He says, since it's not usher for you to eat Maiserani, so you, you can't expect the Maiserani to make your food tevel. It makes no sense. If there's no Isra right now, there's no Isra Achila, you are over not being mafresh, but there's no Isra on eating it. So how could it, how could it be so strong that it makes your food so awesome that you can't eat it? Tevel. A little mixture of this Maestro is not going to do anything. Says the Rav. What? No. No, no. Because there's no Isra to eat it. We'll see in a second. Hold on. What? You were... Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're not. No, but you're not. You're not. You're not. You designate. You're not taking it out. Yeah, but the certain things that there is no amayz mechaver. The trumas mayz there is no amayz mechaver. The right can't eat it. It's still tevel. The raisa, it ruins it. This doesn't ruin. If it's in there, you have you have fruit. If it's in there, yeah. No, no, trumas mayz you can never eat. How are you gonna eat trumas mayz? That's in there. My solution you could. Trumas Maiser you can't. There's no Trumas Maiser or Maserani. Let's talk about it later. Shame, Vein Tzorch Lafresh. You have to you have to say what it is, otherwise it's Tevel. But you don't have to remove it because how much you have to say? My love. Lamando Amar, so now the Gemara says like this. Oh, sponsor. Greg Haber for Brocha for Paranasa, that's Locha, for his entire family, and everyone learned the Dav, that's Rocha, for the members of the HBA group and their families. So the Gemara, my love, Lamando Amar, Sveiku Toivel Kosovar. If you say, according to Chacham, you say that the Suffolk makes something Tevel, and the Ran says, of, we're talking about Suffolk, so he says Suffolk, obviously, Vade also makes Tevel, Kosovar Islay Toivel Sano. Toivel Sano is the idea that I have the right to give my stuff, my Miser, to whoever I want. And it's actually worth money. I could not demand money, but receive money. It's not a bribe. Somebody comes over to me and says, there's a very poor person over there. I know him well. I'm going to give you $100. I heard you just got a $20 million Yerusha of fruit. I want you to give the 10% to that guy that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm going to give you $100 now. You're allowed to take the $100. That $100, Now there's a big shyla. What do you do? Could you be Mekadish a woman with that $100? Is that type of not worth money or not worth money? Fine. So it says the Gemara, but according to this Madam, it says that Sveikai, Toivel, that when you have fruit in the mix, in the pile, and you don't know, it ruins it, it makes it Tevel, it's because I have the right to decide who I give it to and it's worth money. So therefore, I can't give it to this woman. We're talking about this woman who made a nether and she's also in, on, on the entire world. She cannot take my fruit. You know why? Because it's worth money to me. By me giving her, I'm giving up $100. I could have given it to the neighbor for, for somebody would pay me money to give it to the neighbor. And instead of giving it to the neighbor, I'm giving it to her. And I'm also on her. She made a nether against me. So I can't benefit her. According to the man, it says, it says, you don't have to. Call it out. Basically, we're talking about fruit that's mamish hefker. So if it's hefker, it's nothing. It's in there. It's not, doesn't create tevel. And since it doesn't create tevel, less like tevel is not. 
It's it's so I no I can't. Th- there's no there's no monetary value here. If there's no monetary value here. I can give it to whoever I want, including this woman who's also banned over me. So you're asking me um, a steer between a Bryce and a Mishnah, where it says by us that she doesn't get the Miser Ani because it's worth money. It's according to the Mandoma that says, this is a no, and I can't give it to her. But according to the Bryce, it's not worth anything. And maybe I can give it to her. I must be that Tavis no is only in something that if you don't, if you don't do half Russia, it's Tevel. They're, they're, they're one, they're one and the same. Omer le Abaya. Hold on, it's 8 o'clock, we'll talk later. Omer le Abaya. Omer le Abaya. So Abaya argues on his Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef. And he says, listen, I believe there's still a steer here. Because what you're explaining to me, you're trying to make a nice nafkimina, the machloikis between Rebbe Lezer and Chachamim, I don't agree it's a machloikis. If I don't agree it's a machloikis, then we have a contradiction again. We have a contradiction between the, the, the Bryce and the Mishnah. On the one hand, it seems like the woman could take Maitre Ali, and the other hand, it says she can't. No, everybody agrees that it ruins the whole pile. It's different than what you're saying. I'm not concerned that Amaretz doesn't take Maiser Ani. There's no reason in the world that I'm, just like Amaretz, you agree, takes Truma because it's easy for him. He also takes uh, Maiser Ani because it's easy for him. Why? Anybody could just say that his house is Hefker, his millions are Hefker. And for that moment, he's an Ani. So in that moment, the Shokalei will take the fruit. Who? Let's say Pseida. And he doesn't care, so he'll do it. It's easy for him. A person doesn't go ahead and take his Nechas and make it Hefker. I got to tell you real quickly, a Misa from off of the boss, Rabbi Herman, that he went, he lent somebody money. I don't remember the amount. Like $5,000 in those days, you could buy a huge apartment in Bnei Brak, and... The guy obviously didn't pay him back. Because he's been kind of the minute of not paying back. So he went to Reb Chatzkel Avramsky. Reb Chatzkel Avramsky said, listen. What's going on here is the Yitzhar saw that you lived a life and you're Ovid and everything. He's trying to trip you up here. He wants you to get mad. He wants you to, to take revenge. He wants to do all sorts of things. He turned around. He walked out. He said, I'm Michael, the guy the entire apartment. Well, it's an enormous amount of money. You're talking about, what, 70 years ago or so. I'm Michael. Michael. Fine. Next. So... People sometimes are Michael, people are not. But listen to this one. The Mirtas Dilma Zahu Inchi Achrina. She is concerned. Nobody's gonna do such a thing. There's a Maisa Shahaya in Binebra where a guy had, let's say, a, a, a lot, a lot of cases of wine that was Shemitah wine, Shviyas wine. So instead of him taking all the cases of wine down all the stairs and be mafkirit outside, this Chacham Batata, he said, the entire apartment is Hefkir. Maisa Shaya, a guy heard it, he says, okay, I'm zoich in the whole apartment. So he says, oh, no, no, I'm zoich in the apartment, I have a daughter I have to marry off, I'm not, I'm not Michael. It's my apartment. They went to Bezdin. And the be- famous Maisa, you, know, you never heard the story? They went to Bezdin, the Bezdin heard the story, and they passed him like this. I guess it was like a trick, because they were upset at that guy. They said, they said you know, you know who's Zoycha? Not you, not you. The downstairs neighbor. He is a Kenyan Chatzar. He has the first rise of Shia. Once it became Hefker, his apartment downstairs caught the whole apartment. And then the neighbor downstairs gave back the apartment to the original owner. That was the, okay, fine. I'll go upon him. But Dilma, Zohu Be'in the Shachrina. They did a Bedafka because they thought the guy was, a, it was wrong because they understood he was only doing it to be Mafka's wine for Shmiz and it's not, didn't want to give up a two and a half million dollar apartment. Dilma, Zohu Be'in the Shachrina. Hilkach Nechshidu. No, every Amar is concerned that the guy from Bnei Brak is going to show up and take away his house. So he's not going to be mafker everything. Rav Oimer. Let's just do these few lines here. Rav Oimer. Check out this Pasuk right over here. It says, there's a contradiction in What do you do on the third year, right? We're talking about Maiser Oni, third and sixth year. It says in the Pasuk, Vinasata. You should literally give it. There's another Pasuk. You say, Shalai Shonim. Toitzi. You don't give it. You leave it outside. Which one is it? Says Rava, beautiful. It depends. According to the Rani, brings us free. Depends summer or winter. In the winter, you don't leave your fruit outside, they'll get ruined, so it's in the house. Now he's giving personal handouts. And this woman is also to him, Bana. She said, I'm not going to be having enough from all Brios in the world. She can't go knocking in his door and he's going to give her a handout. That's why it's also. That's our Mishnah. 
when it's outdoors in the summer, he just left it there. Anybody could come and grab. You're permitted. She's permitted to have an offer from you. Boy, have a wonderful day.